Hey, what's up? I'm Jonah Fox. Today, we are going to learn a core concept about playing the blues on harmonica. It's a pretty simple idea, and if you're able to use it, you'll find it'll be very powerful, and it's gonna make blues improvising seem a lot more approachable and straightforward. So stay tuned to figure this out. But to get this idea, I need to make sure that you know the basics, or this is gonna be lost on you. If this is a review for you, I'll be pretty quick. So first off, the blues is usually structured using a common chord progression that we call the 12-bar blues. Now there are other variations, but the 12-bar one is the most common. Out of all the chords that we could possibly play, we're just going to focus on three of them. The one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. I'm going to skip the full explanation for now, but if you want to learn more, there is a video linked down in the description. But let's just figure out where these fall on our harmonica. So in the key of G major, G is our one chord. It starts on two draw. That bottom note of the chord is going to be our root note, so we're going to be trying to focus on those today. So C is our four chord, and that's going to be on four, five, and six blow. So we can play four blow, that's our root note. D is our five chord. Now we usually would have a D major here, but we have a D minor, it doesn't really matter. That'd be four, five, and six blow. But the note we wanna focus on is four draw. So those are the roots of our notes. We have two draw for the one chord, we have four blow for the four chord, and we have four draw for the five chord. One, four, five. What you need to understand before you really figure out today's lesson is how to match these notes to a 12 bar blues. Now, I'm gonna have the chords up on the screen and I'm just gonna have the tab for the root note on top of them. And I'm going to play through 12 bars of a blues so you can hear how this fits up. Check it out. That's a 12 bar blues. You can practice this by doing exactly what I just did on backing tracks that you find on YouTube. So just type in blues backing track in G. Most of them have the chords listed right on the screen and just play those notes as the chords change. That's how you practice and you really gotta drill these changes into your head for today's idea to work. And on that note for today's idea, you're also going to need to know a little bit about scales. Now, scales are just a bunch of notes that fit well with certain styles of music. So for the blues, you're gonna to wanna to learn the major and minor pentatonic. So penta means five, tonic means tone. These are two five note scales. One is major. And one is minor. You might have heard of the blues scale. That's just a variation of the minor pentatonic, adding the sharp four note, which is on four half step draw bend. The notes for these scales will be on the screen. And if you can't bend, try my no bend blues scale if you want. It's like a modified major pentatonic scale that works all right too. If you want to study up on these, get my scale cheat sheet download for the notes. It's free, it's in the video description. Okay, so here is the trick. You're going to start and or end each phrase with those chord root notes from before. This is going to give you the impression that you're still really focusing on the current chord and it will just let you play anything you want using the notes of the scale in between that chord tone that you're playing, okay? So if we're playing on a G chord on the one chord, which has two draw, you can both start and end your phrase on the two draw. That's pretty simple. You could also just start your phrase there and play something else afterwards. 
or you can end your phrase on that note. Okay, all of those are going to work. Now, let me make this a little bit more clear and we're gonna focus on each of those situations independently. So I'm gonna play this blues jam right here, always starting and ending on the root note of the chord that the blues is on. So if we're on a G, I'm always gonna start and end on the two draw. If I'm on the C, I'm always gonna start and end on the four blow. And if I'm on the D, I'm always gonna start and end on the four draw. So take a listen. Now what I just played for you was a little formulaic, so you're gonna to wanna to change that up sometimes. And the easiest way to do that is to sometimes start on the note but not end on the same note. And sometimes you're gonna to wanna to start on a different note but end on the root note. So let me play you another jam that focuses on that. And like before, the root note of the chord is going to be highlighted in red so you can really see where this is coming in. So check it out. I hope you got the basic idea. Now I wanna give you three extra tips for improvising in this way. So number one, keep it simple. You don't always need to play all of the notes. Just choosing even one or two adjacent notes to the root of the chord will work. So let's say you were on a G chord, that means we're focusing on the two draw. Okay, so if you can bend, right, you can play the F that's below it and the A that's above it. Number two, this framework is meant to be broken. So change it up and be unpredictable for a bit. That's how solos really stand out. You know how you're playing and you kind of have like a bit of a motif that you're playing over and over again. Well, the thing that makes solos really pop is that they're different from everything that came before it. So change it up and be unpredictable for a little bit. And then when you feel like you're lost or you want to just come back to a place that feels grounded and stable, just go back to focusing on those root notes and those phrases like we did earlier. Number three, and this is the advanced version, try focusing on chord tones instead of the root notes. So instead of putting your focus, starting and ending your phrases, on that bottom root note, like to draw on a G chord, try focusing on another chord tone instead. So if the music is on a G, well, we know a G chord is made up of the notes of G, B, and D. So instead of focusing on the G, try focusing on the B. Okay, and you can do the same thing, start and end on that note. All right, this is going to work with any of the chords. The possible notes for each chord will be listed on the screen. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you wanna learn a little bit more about improvising, this is a very complicated topic, you can click this video up here. Well, that's gonna be it for today. Have fun with this, peace.